Chapter sixty three of Jerusalem to Revelation A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Purgatorio thirty one Terrestrial Paradise Dante's Confession His Immersion in Lethe Beatrice unveiled o thou that art across the sacred stream toward me directing with its point her speech which even edgewise had seemed sharp to me continuing she began without delay say say if this be true to such a charge must thy confession be united now my strength was so confounded that my voice began to move and wholly died away ere by its organs it had been released a while she bore it then what thinkest thou she said reply for thy sad memories are not extinguished by the water yet perplexity and fear together mixed extorted such a yes from out my mouth that eyes to hear its utterance were required even as a crossbow breaks its cord and bow whenever with too great attention shut and with less force the arrow strikes its mark so neath that heavy burden i broke down and as i poured forth gushing tears and sighs my voice more slowly through its passage came then she across the paths which i desired and which were leading thee to love the good beyond which there is nothing one can wish what trenches didst thou find or hindering chains for which thou thus must needs despoil thyself of hope of further progress on thy way what luring charms or what advantages displayed themselves upon the brows of others that thou shouldst pay thy passing court to them Thereat, when I had heaved a bitter sigh, I scarcely had the voice to make an answer, and painfully my lips gave form to it. Weeping, I said, Things at the present turned with their delusive joy my steps aside, as soon as e'er your face was hid from me. Hadst thou been silent, or hadst thou denied said she what thou confessest no less clear would be thy guilt since known by such a judge but when self-accusation of one sin from one's own cheek breaks forth in this our court the wheel is turned to blunt the sharpened edge and yet that for thy fault thou mayst be neither more ashamed and that when thou again shalt hear the sirens thou mayst stronger be desist thou now from sowing tears and hark so shalt thou hear oh what a different path my buried body should have moved thy feet nature ne'er showed thee nor did art such beauty as did the pleasing members which enclosed me and which are scattered now dissolved in earth hence if the highest pleasure failed thee thus by reason of my death what mortal thing should afterward have drawn thee to desire it at the first arrow of deceitful things thou surely oughtest to have risen up to follow me who was no longer such thy wings at least should not have been weighed down to wait for further blows from some young girl or other vain thing of as brief a youth a young bird waits for two blows or for three but for the eyes of fully feathered birds a net is spread or arrow shot in vain as children who are silent when ashamed and with their eyes upon the ground keep listening and conscience-stricken and repentant are 
so I remained, and she, since thou art grieved because of hearing me, lift up thy beard, and thou from seeing shalt receive more grief. With less resistance is a sturdy oak uprooted, either by our native wind, or by the wind that blows from Jabba's land, than I at her behest raised up my chin, and when by beard she asked to see my face, I well perceived the venom in her words. Thereafter, when my face was raised again, I saw that those first creatures were at rest from strewing flowers, and thereupon mine eyes, which were as yet but partially assured, saw Beatrice turn toward the animal which in two natures one sole person is. Though neath her veil and crossed the stream, it seemed to me that she surpassed her old-time self more than she did all others when on earth. So pricked me now the nettle of repentance, that of all other things what turned me most unto its love became to me most hostile. Whereat such great contrition gnawed my heart, that overcome I fell, and what I then became she knows who gave me cause for it. Then when my heart restored my outward strength, I saw the lady I found alone above me, saying, Hold on to me, hold on to me. Into the stream she had already borne me, up to my neck, and dragging me behind her, light as a shuttle or its top was moving. When I was near the blessed shore, I heard, Purge me with hyssop, said in tones so sweet, that far from writing, I cannot recall it. The lovely lady, stretching out her arms, embraced my head and plunged me in the stream so far that I was forced to drink its water. Drawing me thence, she set me when thus bathed within the dance ring of the lovely four, and each of them embraced me with her arm. Nymphs, are we here? and in the sky are stars. Her Beatrice came down into the world. We were ordained to be her maids. We'll lead thee to see her eyes, but for the joyous light therein, the three upon the other side, who more profoundly gaze, will sharpen thine. Thus singing they began, and thereupon they led me with them to the griffin's breast where turning toward us, Beatrice remained. And see to it that thou spare not thine eyes, they said, before the emeralds we have set thee, whence love of old against thee drew his shafts. A thousand wishes, hotter far than flames, bound mine eyes fast to those resplendent eyes, which on the griffin set their steady gaze as in a glass the sun, not otherwise the twofold animal was gleaming in them, at first in one, then in another way. Think, reader, if I wondered when I saw that it was keeping quiet in itself, while in its image it was changing form, while, glad and with amazement filled, my soul was tasting of the food which, while it sates, still causes thirst and hunger for itself, proving themselves to be of higher rank by reason of their deeds. The other three came dancing to their angel round a lake. Turn thou, their song was, turn thou, Beatrice, thy holy eyes upon thy faithful one, who hath to see thee tain so many steps, Kindly do us the favour to unveil thy mouth to him, that he may thus perceive the second loveliness which thou dost hide. O oh, splendour of eternal living light, who neath Parnassus shades, e'er grew so pale, or from its cistern e'er so deeply drank, 
as not to feel bewildered in his mind should he attempt to paint what thou didst seem when symbolized by heaven's own harmonies thou didst reveal thee in the open air purgatorio thirty two terrestrial paradise vicissitudes and transformations of the car the harlot and the giant so steadfast were mine eyes and so intent on gratifying their decennial thirst that all my other senses were asleep and both on this side and on that a wall of heedlessness they had the holy smile so strongly drew them with the olden net when forcibly my face was toward my left turned by those goddesses for from their lips i now was hearing a too steadfastly thereat the state of vision which exists in eyes but newly smitten by the sun caused me to be a while deprived of sight but when my eyes were to the small accustomed i say the small with reference to the great resplendence whence perforce i turned away i saw that on the right the glorious host had wheeled and was returning with the sun and with the sevenfold flame in front of it as to protect itself a troop revolves beneath its shields and wheeleth with its flag before the whole of it can change direction even so the heavenly kingdom's soldiery who forward were had wholly passed us by before its pole had made the chariot turn back to the wheel the ladies then returned and so the griffon drew his blessed burden that though he moved no feather of him shook the lady fair who through the ford had drawn me statius and i were following the wheel which made its orbit with the smaller arc as thus we crossed the lofty wood unpeopled because of her who trusted to the serpent a song angelic kept our steps in time a liberated arrow in three flights perhaps as great a distance would have gone as we had moved when beatrice alighted adam i then heard murmured by them all they circled them around a tree despoiled of flowers and other leaves on every branch its crowning boughs spread out in greater width and higher up they are would for their height be wondered at by indians in their woods thou griffon happy art since with thy beak thou tearest not this pleasant tasting wood because one's belly writhes in pain therewith thus round the sturdy tree the others cried whereat the double-natured animal thus is the seed of all just deeds preserved then turning toward the pole which he had drawn he dragged it forward to the widowed tree and neath it left that part of it tied up as our plants swell when falls the great light mixed with that which shines behind the heavenly cup and as each thereupon renews itself in its own colour ere the sun yokes up his racing horses neath another star even so a hue revealing not as bright as that which roses have and more than that of violets that tree renewed itself whose branches once had been so bare of leaves i understood not tis not sung on earth the hymn which thereupon that people sang nor did i bear to hear the whole song through if i could picture how the unpitying eyes on hearing syrinx story sleepy grew the eyes to which much waking cost so dear as doth an artist who from models paints 
would I describe how I then fell asleep. But let whoever will feign sleeping well. Hence to the point I pass when I awoke, and say a splendour rent my slumber's veil, and then a call, Arise, what doest thou? As Peter, John, and James were led to see some of the early blossoms of the apple which makes the angels eager for its fruit, and causes endless marriage feasts in heaven, and overcome, recovered at the word whereby far greater slumbers had been broken, and even as they perceived their company diminished both by Moses and Elias, and all the raiment of their master changed, so I, recovering, near me standing saw that pitying lady who before had been the leader of my steps along the stream. But where is Beatrice? All lost in doubt, I said, when she, behold her sitting there, beneath the tree's new leaves upon its roots, behold the company surrounding her, the rest on high behind the griffin go, with songs of sweeter sound and deeper theme. I know not if at greater length her words were poured, because now in mine eyes was she who hindered my attending to aught else. On the bare ground she sat, and all alone, left there to be the guardian of the car, I saw the biformed animal tie up. Circling, the seven nymphs with their persons formed the hedge for her, those lights held in their hands, which safe from Oster are and Aquilo. Here for a while shalt thou a woodman be, then without end with me a citizen of that Rome whereof Christ a Roman is. Hence, for the world's sake, which lives badly, keep thine eyes upon the car, and what thou seest be sure to write, when once on earth again. Thus Beatrice, and I, who now was wholly devoted at the feet of her commands, whither she wished, turned both my mind and eyes. Fire ne'er descended with so swift a motion out of dense clouds, when from the highest region the rain is falling, as I now beheld, the bird of Jove swooped down upon the tree, and break not only its new budding leaves and blossoms, but its bark. With all his might he smote the chariot next, whereat it reeled, as in a storm a ship, when by the waves to starboard now, and now to larboard driven. And then a she-fox, which from all good food seemed fasting, I perceived, hurling herself against the bottom of the triumph car. But for her ugly sins upbraiding her, my lady put her to such speedy flight as was permitted by her fleshless bones. Thereafter, whence it first had come, I saw the eagle down into the chariot's arc descend, and leave it feathered with his plumes, and such a voice as from a suffering heart comes forth, was that which came from heaven and said, My little ship, how badly thou art laden. Between both wheels the earth seemed open then, and forth from it I saw a dragon come, who upward through the chariot thrust his tail, and like a wasp which draweth back its sting, withdrawing his bad tail, he drew away part of its floor, and, keen for more, went off. That which remained reclothed itself again, as rich soil doth with grasses, with the plumes offered perhaps with wise and kind intent. Then one wheel and the other and the pole were covered up so quickly that a mouth is open kept much longer by a sigh, when thus the holy structure was transformed, it put forth heads upon its members, three upon its pole, and at each corner one. The first were horned like oxen, but the four had on their foreheads but a single horn. Never had such a monster yet been seen. Sitting thereon 
as boldly as a fort is seated on a lofty mountain top a shameless prostitute appeared before me with eyebrows that were quick to wander round and then to see that none should take up from him i saw a giant standing at her side at times they kissed each other there but since she turned her greedy fickle eyes on me that cruel lover scourged her from her head unto her soles then filled with jealousy and cruel in his wrath loosing the monster he dragged it through the wood so far away that with this last alone he shielded me against the harlot and unnatural beast purgatorio thirty three terrestrial paradise beatrice's prophecy Dante's final purification in the river Unoe. O oh God, the heathen folk are come. Now three, now four, alternately, in shedding tears, the ladies of sweet psalmody began, and Beatrice, with sighs of sympathy, was listening to their words with such a look that Mary at the cross changed little more. But when the other maids had given way that she might speak, she rose upon her feet, and coloured with the hue of fire, replied, A little while, and ye shall not behold me, and then again, beloved sisters mine, a little while, and me ye shall behold. All seven she thereupon before her placed, and merely by a nod behind her moved me, and the lady and the sage who stayed she thus was going on nor do i think her tenth step had been set upon the ground when with her eyes she forcibly met mine then with a tranquil face she said to me more quickly come that if i speak to thee for listening to me thou mayst be well placed as soon as i was with her as i ought she said to me why, brother, dost not venture to question me, now that thou comest with me? As unto those who show excessive reverence, when speaking in the presence of their elders, and therefore draw no clear voice to their teeth, to me it happed that, with imperfect tones, Madonna, I began, my welfare's needs you know, and that which may be good for it. And she to me, and that which may be good for it, and she to me, and that which may be good for it, and she to me, from fear and bashfulness, I wish thee now to extricate thyself, that thou mayst speak no more like one who dreams. Know that the vessel which the serpent broke was and is not, but let whose fault it is Believe God's vengeance fears not human sobs. Nor shall the eagle airless for all time remain, Who left his feathers on the car, Whence monstrous it became, and then a prey. For I see well, and therefore tell it, Stars now near, and from all checks and obstacles secure, Which for us shall a time obtain, Within which a five hundred ten and five, Sent forth by God, shall kill the female thief, and that great giant who with her is guilty. And my prediction, which is dark perhaps, as Themis and the Sphinx, persuades thee less, because, as theirs did, it beclouds thy mind. But facts will soon become the Naiades, which shall this difficult enigma solve, without the loss of either sheep or grain. Give heed, and even as uttered by myself, see that thou teach these words of mine to those that live the life which is a race toward death and bear in mind when thou art writing them not to conceal in what state thou hast seen the tree which twice now hath been here despoiled whoever robs or teareth that apart with blasphemy of deed offendeth god who for his own use only made it holy 
for biting it in pain and in desire the first soul longed for him five thousand years and more who punished in himself the bite thy mind is sleeping if it deemeth not that for a special cause it saw so high and at its summit so inverted is and if the vain thoughts which surround thy mind had not been else a water and their pleasure as to the mulberry a pyramus thou by so many circumstances only wouldst in the interdict upon the tree see morally god's justice but since made of stone i see thee in thine understanding and being petrified so dark in mind that thou art blinded by my speech's light i also if not written wish that painted at least thou bear it in thee for the reason the pilgrim's staff is carried wreathed with palm and i as sealing wax which changes not the shape imprinted on it by the seal so likewise is my brain now stumped by you but why so far above my mental sight are your desired words now flying up it loses them the more the more it strives that thou she said mayst thus appraise the school which thou hast followed and perceive how able its teaching is to carry out my word and also see that your ways are removed as far from the divine as ere the heaven which speeds most high is distant from the earth whence her i answered i do not recall that i have e'er estranged myself from you nor am i conscious of remorse therefore and if thou canst not call it to thy mind she answered with a smile remember now that this same day thou hast of Leti drunk and if from smoke a fire may be inferred this thy forgetfulness but clearly proves a fault in thy desire intent elsewhere truly my word shall naked be henceforth as much at least as it shall needful seem to make them clear to thine untutored sight both more refulgent and with slower steps the sun was holding now the noonday circle which with each point of view moves here and there when even as he who as a leader goes ahead of people stops if something new he find upon his path the ladies seven stopped at a death pale shadow's edge like that which neath green leaves and darkling boughs the alps cast o'er their icy mountain streams in front of them i seem to see euphrates and tigress from one fountain issue forth and from each other slowly part as friends oh light and glory of the human race what stream is this which from one source unfolds and then from its own self itself withdraws in answer to this question i was told pray that matilda tell thee whereupon like one who frees himself from blame replied the lovely lady this with other things hath he been told by me and i am sure that lethe's water hath not hid it from him and beatrice perhaps a greater care which oft deprives one's memory of its power hath made the vision of his mind's eye dark but you know where behold which yonder now is flowing forth conduct him to its bank and as thou art wont revive his lifeless power even as a noble soul makes no excuse but to another's will its own conforms as soon as e'er by outward signs disclosed even so when she had taken hold of me the lovely lady moved and then to statius said with a lady's manner come with him if reader i had now more space for writing i'd sing at least in part of that sweet drink which never would have satisfied my thirst 
but inasmuch as filled are all the pages planned warp-like for this second canticle no further doth art's bridle let me go from that most holy water i returned made young again as new trees are in spring when with new foliage they renew themselves pure and disposed to rise up to the stars End of chapter 63 End of Purgatorio Chapter 64 of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience By William Blake and Others this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Paradiso, one. Introduction to the Paradiso. Invocation of Apollo. Ascent through the sphere of fire. The order of the universe. The glory of him who moveth everything penetrates all the universe and shines more brightly in one part and elsewhere less. Within the heaven which most receives his light I was and saw what he who thence descends neither knows how nor hath the power to tell for as it draweth near to its desire, our intellect so deeply sinks therein, that recollection cannot follow it. As much, however, of the holy realm, as in my memory I could treasure up, shall now become the subject of my song. O oh, good Apollo, for my final task, make me as worthy a vessel of thy power as thou dost ask for thy dear laurel's gift one of parnassus peaks hath hitherto sufficed me but with both of them i now must start upon the course which still remains enter my breast and breathe thou as of old thou didst when from the scabbard of his limbs thou drewest Marcius forth. O power divine, if thou but lend thyself to me so much that I may show the blessed kingdom's shadow which in my mind is stamped, to thy dear tree thou'lt see me come and crown me with the leaves, my theme, and thou shalt cause me to deserve so seldom father are there any picked to grace a caesar's or a poet's triumph the fault of human wills and to their shame that his penaean leaf should bring forth joy within the joyous delphic deity when for itself it causes one to thirst a great flame follows from a little spark perhaps with better voices after me shall men so pray that sarah will reply for mortal men the lantern of the world rises through diverse passes but from that which with three crosses brings four rings together it issues on a more propitious course and in conjunction with a kinder star, and more in its own image, moulds and seals the mundane wax. A pass almost like this had made it morning there and evening here, and all that hemisphere was white and black the other side. When Beatrice I saw turn toward her left, and looking at the sun, no eagle ever gazed at it so keenly. And even as from the first a second ray is wont to come and upward start again, 
as would a pilgrim longing to return. Even so, to her act, by mine eyes infused through my imagination, mine conformed, and on the sun I gazed beyond our wont. Much is permitted there, which is not here allowed our faculties, thanks to the sight created as the human race's home. Not long did I endure it, nor so briefly, as not to see it sparkle all around, as molten iron doth, when out of fire it issues boiling. Day, then, all at once, seemed joined to day, as if the one who can had with another sun adorned the sky. With eyes fixed wholly on the eternal wheels stood Beatrice, and I on her fixed mine, from there above removed. Looking at her, I such became with him, as Glaucus did, on tasting of the herb, which in the sea made him a fellow of the other gods. Trance, humanizing, could not be expressed by words. Let this case, therefore, him suffice, for whom grace holds experience in reserve. If I, O love that rulest heaven, was only that part of me which thou didst last create, thou knowest that with thy light didst raise me up. When the rotation thou, by being longed for, dost make eternal, drew me to itself, by harmonies distributed and tuned by thee, it seemed that so much of the sky was by the sun's flame set on fire, that rain nor river ever made so broad a lake. The newness of the sound and brilliant light kindled in me a wish to know their cause, never with so great keenness felt. Whence she, who saw me even as I behold myself, opened her mouth to calm my troubled mind, ere I did mine to question and began. With false imagining dost thou so dull thyself, that thou perceivest not what else thou wouldst perceive, if thou hadst thrown it off. Thou art not on earth, as thou dost think thyself, but lightning fleeing from its proper place, ne'er ran as thou, that art thereto returning. If I was by her little smiled out words of my first doubt relieved, Within a new one was I the more ensnared. I therefore said, Already sated, I had found repose from great amazement, but I wonder now how I can these light elements transcend. Heaving thereat a pitying sigh, she turned her eyes upon me with the look a mother gives her delirious child, and then began all things, whate'er they be, an order have among themselves, and form this order is, which makes the universe resemble God. Therein exalted creatures see the trace of that eternal worth, which is the end for which the mentioned order is created. Within the ordered state whereof I speak, all natures have their place with different lots as nearer to their source they are, or less. Wherefore, toward different ports they wend their way through the vast sea of being, each endowed with instinct, granted it to bear it on. This instinct toward the moon impelleth fire. This is the motive force in mortal hearts. This binds together and unites the earth nor doth this bow impel those creatures only which lack intelligence, but those that have intelligence and love. The providence 
which ordereth all this with its own light, air calms the heaven, inside of which revolves the one that moveth with the greatest speed. And thither now, as to a place ordained, that bowstring's power is bearing us along, which to a glad mark speeds whate'er it shoots. Tis true that, as a form is frequently discordant with the intention of an art, because its matter in response is death, so likewise from this natural course at times a creature turns away, for power it hath, though thus impelled, to bend aside elsewhere, as one may see fire falling from a cloud, if by false pleasure drawn, that primal impulse turn it aside to earth. If well I judge, no further shouldst thou wonder at thy rising, than at a stream thou dost, which to its foot, down from a lofty mountain's top descends. As great a marvel would it be in thee, if bid of hindrance, thou hadst sat thee down, as rest on earth, wood in a living flame. Then, toward the sky, she turned her face again. Paradiso two. The first heaven, the moon, reflected happiness in constant spirits who fail to keep their vows. O ye who in a little boat embarked have fain to listen, followed in the wake of this my ship, which singing ploughs ahead, go back to see your shores again, start not upon the ocean, for if me ye lost, he might perhaps be left behind astray. The seas I sail were never crossed before. Minerva breathes, Apollo is my guide, and all nine muses point me out the bears. Ye are the few who early raised your necks for angels bread, on which one here on earth subsists, but with which none are ever sated. Ye well may start your vessel on the deep salt sea, If in the furrow of my ship ye stay, Ere smooth again the waves become. Those glorious ones who crossed the seas to Colchis Were not so much amazed as ye shall be When Jason turned a ploughman they beheld. The innate and ceaseless thirsting for the realm in God's own image made, was bearing us as swiftly as ye see the heavens revolve. On high looked Beatrice, and I on her, and in the time perhaps an arrow takes to light and fly, and from the notch be freed, I saw that I had come to where a marble turned to itself my sight. Hence she from whom the working of my mind could not be hid, as glad as she was lovely, turned toward me, and said, Direct thy grateful mind to God, who with the first star hath united us. Meseemed as if a cloud were covering us, as luminous and dense, as hard and polished, as is a diamond, smitten by the sun. Within itself the eternal pearl received us, as water, though unbroken it remain, receives within itself a ray of light. If body I was, nor can one here conceive how one dimension could endure another, which needs must be, if body enter body, the more should we be kindled by the wish that essence to behold, wherein is seen how once with God our nature was conjoined. There will be seen what here we hold by faith, not demonstrated 
but will self-known be as is the primal truth which men believe my lady i replied as best i can do i devoutly render thanks to him who from the mortal world hath severed me but tell me what this body's dark spots are which cause the folk down yonder on the earth to tell each other fables about cain she smiled a little then she said if mortals opinion therein airs where key of sense unlocketh not surely the shafts of wonder ought not to pierce thee now for thou perceivest that short are reason's wings when following sense but tell me what thou thinkst therefore but tell me what thou thinkst thereof thyself and i what seems to us diverse up here is caused i think by bodies thin and dense and she thou'lt surely see that thy belief is sunk in error if but well thou heed the arguments i'll now oppose to it the eighth sphere shows you many shining stars which both in quality and magnitude may be observed to differ in their looks if only rarity and density caused this among them all one single virtue would more and less and equally be shared virtues that differ needs must be the fruit of formal principles and these save one would by thy way of reasoning be destroyed again if thinness caused the dusky spots which thou dost ask about this planet would in portions through its bulk its matter lack or as a body what is fat and lean distributes so would this one alternate its volumes leaves if true the former were twould in the sun's eclipses be revealed because the latter's light would then shine through as when in other thin things introduced this does not happen hence the other one must be considered now and should i chance to quash it false will thy opinion prove if therefore it be so that this thin part extends not through a limit there must be beyond which what is contrary thereto allows it not to pass the other's ray is hence reflected as colour from a glass returns which back of it concealeth lead thou now say that the ray seems dimmer there than in the other parts it is because from further back reflected from this retort experimenting which is wont to be the fountain of the rivers of your arts can if thou ever try it set thee free thou take three mirrors two of them removed at equal distance from thee let the third placed tween them more remotely meet thine eyes then turning toward them let a lamp stand so between them as to shine upon all three and be reflected on thee from them all though the most distant light will not extend so much in quantity thou see thereby how it must needs with equal brightness shine and now as at the stroke of burning rays what lies beneath the snow is wholly bed of what were previously its cold and colour thee thus remaining in thine intellect will i inform with such a living light that it will quiver 
when thou seest it. Within the heaven of peace divine revolves a body, subject to whose influence lies the being of whatever it contains. The next, which hath so many eyes, distributes that being among the different essences distinguished from it and contained by it. The other spheres, by various differences, disposed to their effects and causes those distinctions which within themselves they have. These organs of the world so go their way, as thou perceivest now from grade to grade, that from above they take, and downward act. Give me good heed, as through this argument I seek the truth thou wishest, that henceforth thou mayst know how to cross the ford alone. The holy circle's influence and motion, as from the blacksmith doth the hammer's art, must from the blessed motors be inspired. And that heaven which so many lights adorn receives its impress from the mind profound which turneth it and makes thereof a seal. And as the soul which lives within your dust unfolds itself through members which are different and unto different potencies conformed, so likewise multiplied among the stars doth that intelligence unfold its goodness, while on its unity itself revolves. Each different power a different alloy makes, mixed with the precious body which it quickens, and with which it unites, as life in you. Because of that glad nature whence it flows, the mingled virtue through the body shines, as through a living pupil, joy. From this comes what, between light and light, a difference seems, and not from rarity and density. This is the formal principle which makes, according to its strength, things dark and bright. Paradiso, three. The first heaven, the moon, reflected happiness. Inconstant spirits, who fail to keep their vows. That sun, which erst had warmed my heart with love, by proving and refuting, had revealed to me the pleasing face of lovely truth and i in order to confess myself corrected and assured lifted my head as high as utterance of assent required but that i might behold it there appeared a sight which to itself so closely held me that my confession i remembered not even as from polished or transparent glasses or waters clear and still but not so deep that wholly lost to vision is their bed the features of our faces are returned so faintly that upon a pallid brow a pearl comes no less faintly to our eyes thus saw i many a face that longed to speak i therefore ran into the fault opposed to that which kindled love between man and fount. As soon as I became aware of them, supposing they were mirrored images, to find out whose they were, I turned mine eyes, and seeing nothing, back again I turned them straight on into the light of my sweet guide, whose holy eyes were glowing as she smiled. Be not surprised, she said, that I should smile at what is childish in thy present thought, 
since on the truth it trusts not yet its foot but as its wont is turneth thee in vain real substances are these whom thou perceivest assigned here for a vow not wholly kept speak to them then and hear them and believe for from itself the true light which contents them permits them not to turn their feet away and i addressed me to the shade which seemed most eager to converse and i began like one confounded by too great desire o oh, well-created spirit that in rays of life eternal dost that sweetness taste which never is untasted understood twere grateful be to me if thou content me with thine own name and thy companion's lot hence promptly and with laughing eyes she said not otherwise doth our love lock its doors against a just desire than that love doth who wills that all his court be like himself a virgin sister was i in the world and if within itself thy mind look well my being fairer will not hide me from thee but thou wilt recognize that i'm picada who placed here with these other blessed ones am happy in the slowest moving sphere our wishes which are only set on fire by that which is the holy spirit's pleasure rejoice in that our joy was willed by him and this allotment which appears so low is therefore given to us because our vows neglected were and not completely kept hence I to her in these your wondrous faces there shines i know not what that is divine which from your old appearance changes you hence in remembering you i was not quick for what then thou dost tell me helps me so that i more easily recall thy face but tell me ye who here so happy are are ye desirous of a higher place that ye may see more friends or make you more first with those other shades she smiled a little and then replied to me so joyously that she appeared to burn with love's first fire brother love's virtue sets our will at rest and makes us wish for only what we have and doth not make us thirsty for aught else if higher we desired to be our wishes would be discordant with the will of him who here discerneth us which thou wilt see can in these circles not occur if love be necessary to existence here and if love's nature thou consider well nay more essential to this blessed life it is that we should be within the will divine whereby our wills become one will and so even as we are from grade to grade throughout this realm to all the realm is pleasing as to its king who in his will in wills us and his will is our peace and that the ocean is whereunto moveth all that it creates and all that nature makes clear was it then to me that everywhere in heaven is paradise and yet the grace of good supreme reigns there in many ways but as it happens that if one food sate and longing for another still remain for one we ask and one decline with thanks even thus with word and act did i to learn from her what was the nature of the web whose shuttle she drew not unto its end high worth and perfect life in heaven she said a lady higher up here in whose rule the robe and veil are warm that till death come both watch and sleep they may beside that spouse who every vow accepts which love conforms to that which pleases him 
to follow her when i was but a girl i fled the world and in her habit clothing me i promised that i would keep within her order's path thereafter men more used to ill than good out of that pleasant cloister dragged me forth and god knows what my life was after that this other splendour also which reveals itself to thee upon my right and glows with all the radiance of this sphere of ours takes to herself what of myself i say a nun she was and likewise from her head the shadow of the sacred veils was torn but when she too was brought back to the world against her wishes and against good usage she never from the heart's veil freed herself this is the splendour of the great costanza who by the second wind of swabia gave the third and final power birth she thus addressed me and thereat began to sing ave maria and singing disappeared as through deep water heavy objects do mine eyes which followed after her as far as it was possible on losing her back to the mark of greater longing turned and unto beatrice reverted wholly but she so flashed upon me as i gazed that first my sight endured it not and this the slower made me in my questioning Paradiso four. The slower made me in my questioning. Paradiso four. The first heaven, the moon, reflected happiness, in constant spirits who fail to keep their vows. A free man between two viands equally attractive and removed would die of hunger before he carried either to his teeth thus would a lamb between the ravenings of two fierce wolves keep fearing each alike thus would a dog remain between two does hence by my doubts impelled in equal measure if i was silent i reproach me not nor do i praise since thus it had to be i held my peace but my desire was painted upon my face and far more warmly thus i asked than had it been by uttered speech hence beatrice did even as daniel once when in nebuchadnezzar he appeased the wrath which had unjustly made him cruel and clearly do i see she said how both thy wishes so attract thee that thy thought is so self-bound that it is not expressed thou arguest thus if my good will endure why doth the violence of others cause the measure of my merit to be less again it gives thee cause for doubt that souls seem to return unto the stars again according to the opinion plato holds these are the questions which upon thy will are thrusting equally i'll hence deal first with that one which hath most of venom for thee of all the seraphs he who most in gods himself or moses samuel or i say whichever john thou choose or even mary have in no other heaven their seats than have those spirits which appeared to thee just now nor for their being more or fewer years but all make beautiful the highest sphere and each in different ways enjoys sweet life through feeling more and less the eternal breath they did not 
here reveal themselves, because this special sphere had been allotted them, but to express the lowest heavenly state. Thus must one speak to your intelligence, since only from sense objects can it learn what it thereafter fits for understanding. Because of this, the scriptures condescend to your capacity, and feet and hands ascribe to God, and yet mean something else. And Holy Church, in human form, presents Gabriel and Michael to you and the other who to Tobias once restored his house. That which Timaeus teaches of the soul is not like that which one up here beholds, for as he says it, so he seems to mean. He says that each soul to its star returns, because he thinks that it was severed thence, when nature granted it as form. And yet his doctrine is perhaps of other guise than what his words imply, and may possess a meaning which is not to be despised. In case he mean that to these wheel-like spheres returns their influences praise or blame, his bow may hit, perhaps, upon a truth. This a principle, ill understood, once turned nigh all the world awry, so that in naming Jove, Mercury, and Mars it went astray. The other Tao, whereby thy mind is stirred, less venom hath, because its harmfulness could not conduct thee elsewhere from my side. That this our justice should appear to be unjust in the eyes of mortals argues faith, and not heretical depravity, but here because your human understanding can penetrate this truth with ease, I'll now, as thou desirest, render thee content. If violence it be, when he who suffers contributes naught to him who uses force, these souls were not excused because of that. For will, unless it willeth, is not quenched, but act as nature acts in fire, though turned a thousand times aside by violence. For whether it be bent, or much, or little, it yieldeth to the force. And so did these, when able to regain the holy place. For if their will had been as absolute as that which held Lorenzo on his grate, or that which to his hand made muteous cruel, it would, as soon as freed, have urged them back along the road o'er which they once were dragged. But wills, as sperm as that, are very rare. And by these words, if thou hast gathered them, as it behoved thee to, that doubt is quashed, which often would have troubled thee again, but now, athwart thine eyes, another pass appears, one such, that from it by thyself thou wouldst not issue, but wouldst weary first. I surely have instilled this in thy mind, that spirits who are happy could not lie, since such are always near the primal truth. Yet from Picada thou mayst next have heard that Constance for the veil retained her love, she, therefore, seems to contradict me here. Oft hath it happened, brother, heretofore, that to escape from danger one has done against one's will what was not right to do, as at his father's hest Alcmaeon did, who impious made himself his mother killing in order not to fail in piety. In such a case I'd have thee think that force mingles with will, and that they so behave, that sinful actions 
cannot be excused. Absolute will consenteth not to wrong, but in so far consenteth as it fears, unless it yield to be more greatly harmed. Hence, when Picarda puts the matter thus, she means it of the will that's absolute, and of the other eye. Hence, both speak true. Such was the rippling of the holy stream, which issued from the fount whence every truth derives, and such it sets both doubts at rest. O thou beloved of the primal lover, O goddess, said I then, whose speech both warms and inundates me so, that more and more it quickens me with life, not deep enough is my love to return thee grace for grace. But let who sees and can provide for this. I well see that our mind is never sated, unless it be illumined by the truth outside of which no truth extends. Therein it rests, as doth a wild beast in its lair, as soon as it attains it. And it can attain it, else would all desires be vain. Hence, like a shoot, doubt rises at the foot of truth, and this is nature, which from height to height impels us toward the mountain's top. This biddeth me, and this assurance gives me, lady, with reverence to inquire of you about another truth that's dark to me. I wish to know if one can so content you for broken boughs by means of other things that these shall not prove light upon your scales. Then Beatrice looked at me with her eyes, filled so divinely with the sparks of love, that overcome my vision turned in flight, and I, with bowed eyes, almost lost myself. End of chapter 64Chapter 65 of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Paradiso 5. The first heaven, the moon, the second heaven, Mercury, the happiness of beneficent activity ambitious spirits if in the heat of love i flame on thee beyond the measure which is seen on earth and vanquish thus the power of thine eyes wonder thou not thereat for this proceeds from perfect sight which as it sees directs its feet to penetrate the good perceived i clearly see that in thine intellect the light eternal is already shining, which, if but seen, always enkindles love. And if aught else seduce the love of men, tis nothing but some vestige of that light, which there, ill-recognized, is shining through. Thou now wouldst know, if for an unkept vow, one could with other service pay enough, gainst prosecution to ensure the soul. T'was thus that Beatrice began this canto, and even as one who cuts not short his speech, her holy argument continued thus. The greatest gift which of his bounty God bestowed, when he created, and the nearest like his own goodness, and the one most prized by him, was freedom of the will, wherewith all creatures with intelligence, and they alone, both were and are endowed. Now, if from this thou argue, thou perceive a vow's high value, if so made it be, that God gives his consent when thou givest thine. For when this pact is closed between God and man, a sacrifice 
is made of this great treasure whereof I speak, and made by its own act. What, then, in compensation can be given? In thinking thou canst use thine offering well, good wouldst thou do with wrongly gotten gain. On the chief question thou art now informed, but since in this thing holy church exempts, which seems against the truth I showed to thee, a little longer must thou sit at table, because the solid food which thou hast taken requires for thy digestion further help. Open thy mind to what I now reveal, and fix it there within, for having heard without retaining doth not knowledge make. In the essence of this sacrifice two things combine. One, that whereof the sacrifice is made. The other is the pact itself. This last can never cancel be, except by being kept, and very definite concerning this is what was said above. The Hebrews, therefore, were alone compelled to make an offering, though their offer might, in some events, be changed, as thou must know. The other, which thou knowest as its matter, may well be such that there will be no sin if for some other matter it be changed. But at his own free will let no one shift the burden he has placed upon his back, unless the white and yellow keys are turned and let him deem all permutations foolish unless the thing abandoned be contained in that which is assumed as four in six whatever then weighs by its worth so much that it can cause all scales to tip cannot by any other spending be made good let mortals not act lightly with their vows. Be faithful, and in this thing be not thoughtless, as Jephthah was when offering up the first, who should have said, I wrongly did, then keep his vow, and so do worse. And thou mayst deem as impious that great leader of the Greeks, because of whom Iphigenia mourned for her fair face, and for herself made fools and wise men weep who heard of such a right ye christians be more serious when ye act be not like feathers in all winds nor think that any water will avail to cleanse you ye have the testaments both old and new to guide you and the shepherd of the church let this for your salvation be enough if evil greed should teach you otherwise be men and not like undiscerning sheep that in your midst no dew may laugh at you nor do as doth a little lamb that leaves its mother's milk and like a wanton fool against itself for its own pleasure fights thus be a treach to me even as i write then full of eagerness she turned in that direction where the world is most alive. Her silence and her change of countenance, silence imposed upon my eager mind, which had ahead of it new questions now. Then, as an arrow doth, which strikes the mark, before the bowstring is at rest, even so did we speed on into the second realm. So joyous did I see my lady there, as into that heaven's light she entered, that because of it the planet brighter grew and if the star was changed and smiled what then did i become who by my very nature in all ways am susceptible of change as in a fish-pond which is still and clear the fish draw near to that which from without so cometh that they take it for their food i thus saw far more than a thousand splendours approaching us and there was heard in each lo here is one who shall increase our loves 
and as each one came up to me the shade was seen replete with joy within the bright effulgence issuing from its midst think reader if what here is entered on should not proceed how full of pain would be thy craving to know more and by thyself thou'lt see how great was my desire to hear from these about the state of their existence as soon as to mine eyes they were revealed o oh, well-born spirit to whom grace permits to see the thrones of heaven's eternal triumph ere thy life militant be left behind we by the light throughout all heaven diffused are kindled hence wouldst thou inform thyself respecting us be sated at thy will thus was it said to me by one of those kind spirits and by beatrice speak speak with freedom and as thou wouldst gods believe i clearly see how thou in thine own light dost nest thyself and from thine eyes dost flush it they beam so radiantly when thou dost smile but who thou art i know not nor why thou deserving soul hast that sphere's grade which veils itself from mortals with another's rays thus i when i had turned me toward the light which had addressed me first far brighter than it made itself than it had been before as doth the sun which by exceeding splendour itself conceals itself, whene'er its heat has gnawed away the tempering of dense mists. So by increase of joy that holy form in its own radiance hid itself from me, and wholly thus wrapped up in such a way replied to me, as sings the following song. Paradiso six, The Second Heaven, Mercury, the happiness of beneficent activity ambitious spirits when constantine had turned the eagle back canter the course of heaven its flight pursued behind the ancient who lavinia wedded a hundred and a hundred years and more the bird of god on europe's verge abode hard by the mountains whence it issued first and neath the shadow of its sacred plumes it governed there the world from hand to hand and changing thus reached mine caesar i was and am justinian he who by the will of that first love which now i feel withdrew the useless and excessive from the laws and i before attending to this work believed that christ one only nature had not more and was with such a faith content but blessed agapetus who was then the highest shepherd set me by his words upon the pathway of the genuine faith him i believed and what was in his faith i now see clearly even as thou dost see that contradictions are both false and true as soon as with the church i moved my feet god of his grace with that great task was pleased to inspire me and thereto i gave me holy War to my belisarius i entrusted to whom heaven's right hand was so well conjoined it seemed a sign that from it i should rest here then to thy first question ends my answer its nature though constrains me to go on with something more that thou mayst see how rightly gainst the holy standard moves both who appropriates and who opposes it see what great virtue caused it to deserve respect for from that moment it began when pallas died to give it sovereignty thou knowest that in alba it sojourned three hundred years and more till finally three against three fought for its sake again thou knowest too what from the sabines wrong through seven kings till lucretia's grief it did conquering the neighbouring peoples all around thou knowest what it did gainst brennusborm and pyrrhus and against the other kings and self-ruled states by rome's elect whereby torquatus quinctius for his unkept luck surnamed the decii and fabii acquired the fame which 
gladly I am balm. It brought the pride of those Arabians low, who traversed in the wake of Hannibal those alpine rocks, whence thou, Po, glidest down, Scipio, and Pompey triumphed under it when young, and bitter to that hill it seemed, beneath which thou wast born. Then, near the time when willed it was by heaven, that all the world should be reduced to its own peaceful state, Caesar assumes it at the hest of Rome, and that which from the Var unto the Rhine it did, the Seon, Isere, and Seine perceived, and every valley whence the Rhone is filled. What next it did, when, issuing from Ravenna, it leaped the Rubicon, was such a flight, that neither tongue nor pen could follow it. Towards Spain it wheeled its host around, then turned Durazzo wood, and smote Vasalio so, that to the torrid Nile the pain was felt, and Tandrus and the Simois, whence it started it sore again, and there where Hector lies, then hill for Ptolemy it roused itself. Thence, with the speed of lightning, it swooped down on Juba. Toward your west it next turned back, for there it heard Pompeian trumpets blow. For what it did with its next standard bearer, Brutus and Cassius with him, barks in hell. Modena and Perugia to it grieved. Sad Cleopatra, who before it fleeing, took from the ass the dark and sudden death, is weeping still for what with him it did. With him it reached the distant Red Sea's shore. With him it brought the world to such a state of peace that Janus had his temple closed. But what the sign which causes me to speak had done before and after was to do throughout the mortal world which owns its sway comes to seem small and dark if in the hand of its third caesar it be looked upon with clearly seeing eyes and spirit pure because the living justice which inspires me granted that sign when in the latter's hand the glory of carrying out its wrath's revenge now wonder here at what i further tell thee when this was done with titus it ran on to avenge the avenging of the ancient sin and later when the tooth of lombardy the holy church had bitten charles the great came to her help by conquering neath its wings thou now canst judge of those i charged above and of their sins which all your woes produced against the public standard one sets up the yellow fleur de lis while yet another appropriates it to a party's use hence hard it is to see which sinneth most let them the ghibellines their tricks perform under some other sign for this one he e'er follows ill who it from justice parts nor let this new charles smite it with his guelphs but let him rather fear the taloned claws which from a greater lion once stripped off his hide often have sons and now bewailed their father's guilt hence let none think that god will for his lilies change his coat of arms this little star of ours adorns itself with those good spirits who have active been that fame and honour might live after them and when thus deviating one's desires tend thitherward the rays of true love needs must upward mount with less intensity but in the balancing of our rewards with our deserts part of our joy consists because we see them as no more nor less hereby the living justice sweetens so our love in us that it can never more be turned aside to any kind of wrong voices that differ make on earth sweet music so in this life of ours its different grades produce sweet harmony among these spheres and in the present pearl there shines the light of romeo he whose beautiful and great performance was ungratefully repaid and yet the provencals who gainst him worked laugh not he therefore takes an evil path 
who to his harm another's good deeds turns four daughters and each one of them a queen had raymond berenger and though low-born and alien romeo twas did this for him then slandering words led raymond to demand a reckoning of this upright man who five and seven had rendered him for every ten thereat though poor and old he went his way and if the world but knew the heart he had while crust by crust he begged his livelihood much as it praises it would praise him more paradiso seven the second heaven mercury the happiness of beneficent activity ambitious spirits hosanna o thou holy god of hosts that with thy clarity dost brighter make the happy fire of these celestial realms as thus to his own song he turned himself by me that substance was seen singing now or which a double light two folds itself and to their dance both that one and the rest addressed themselves and then like swiftest sparks with sudden distance veiled themselves from me in doubt i was and to myself kept saying tell tell it to her tell i said my lady who with her sweet distillings slakes my thirst that reverence though which masters all of me by the mere syllables of bay and each bowed me like one that's overcome by sleep a short while beatrice endured me thus then lighting up my face with such a smile as even in fire would bless one she began as i am unmistakably aware how a just vengeance could have been avenged with justice hath occasioned thee to doubt but i shall quickly liberate thy mind hence listen for my words will now bestow on thee the present of a mighty truth by not accepting for the power that wills a helpful curb the man who was not born damning himself damned all his progeny wherefore the human race lay sick below in serious sin for many centuries until the word of god was pleased to send to where the nature which had wandered far from its creator to his self he joined by the mere act of his eternal love now turn thy sight to what is argued now this nature thus united to its maker was as when first created pure and good but through its own fault was in banishment exiled from paradise because it turned out of the path of truth and its own life as to the suffering therefore which the cross afforded none so justly ever bit if measured by the nature thus assumed and likewise none was ever so unjust considering who the person was that suffered within whom such a nature was conjoined from one act therefore issued things diverse for one same death pleased both the jews and god it caused the earth to quake and opened heaven no longer strange should it appear to thee henceforth when it is said a just revenge was by a just court afterward avenge but i perceive that now from thought to thought thy mind is in a knot tied up from which with great desire it seeks to free itself thou sayest what i hear i clearly see but from me hidden is why god should will for our redemption just this way alone buried my brother lieth this decree from all men's eyesight whose intelligence hath not in love's flame reached maturity however inasmuch as on this mark 
great is the gazing and but little seem i'll say why this one was the worthiest way goodness divine which spurneth from itself all envy burning in itself so sparkles that its eternal beauties it displays whatever from it is immediately distilled hath afterward no end for when it sets its seal its stamp is not removed whatever from it is immediately rained down is wholly free for that lies not under the power of secondary things since most like it it gives it greatest pleasure because the holy fire which lighteth all things is brightest in what most resembles it the human creature is by all these things advantaged hence if one of them be lacking it needs must fall from its nobility nothing but sin deprives it of its freedom and maketh it unlike the highest good hence little is it whitened by its light and to its dignity it ne'er returns unless where sin has emptied it fill up for evil pleasures with just penalties when in its seed your nature wholly sinned it was of all these dignities deprived as well as banished far from paradise nor could they be regained by any path if with due subtlety thou pay attention except by crossing one of these two fords either that of his courtesy alone god should forgive it or that by itself mankind should for its folly make amends fixed as attentively upon my words as thou art able thrust thou now thine eye within the eternal counsel's deep abyss since finite man could never make amends because unable in humility by new obedience to descend as far as disobeying he had meant to mount and this the reason is why man was barred from making satisfaction by himself it hence behooved that god by his own ways should reinstate man in his perfect life by one i mean or else by both at once but since so much more grateful is the work a workman does the more it represents the goodness of the heart from which it comes goodness divine which on the world imprints its seal was pleased to move by all its path to raise you up again nor hath there been nor will there ever be by either way between the first of days and last of nights so high and so magnificent a plan for god was far more bountiful in giving himself to make man fit to raise himself than had he only of himself forgiven therefore all other means had fallen short of justice if the son of god had not humbled himself incarnate to become but wholly to fulfil thine every wish i'll now go back to clarify one point that thou mayst see as plainly there as i thou sayest i see that water nay i see that fire and air and earth and all their mixtures become corrupt and but a little while endure and yet created things were these if therefore what was said above were true safe from corruption ought these things to be are the angels brother and the perfect world in which thou now art may be called created such as they are in their perfected state the elements however thou hast named and those things which by means of them are made by a created virtue are informed created was the matter which they have created was the informing influence in all these stars which round about them move the rays and motion of the holy lights 
withdraw from pure matter's potentiality the soul of every brute and every plant but without agency doth kindliness supreme breathe your life forth and with itself enamours it so greatly that thereafter it always longs for it and furthermore thou canst from this infer your resurrection if thou recall how human flesh was made when both of man's first parents were created paradiso eight the third heaven venus the happiness of love the spirits of lovers the world was at its peril wont to think that in the third of epicycle circling fair cypria beamed her sensual love abroad the ancient peoples therefore in their ancient error with sacrifice and votive cry honoured not her alone but with diona cupid as well the former as her mother the latter as her son and used to say that he had sat of old in dido's lap and took from her from whom i here begin the name word of the star at which the sun looks fondly now behind and now in front of our ascending to it i was not aware but that we in it were my lady whom grown more fair i saw assured me fully and then as in a flame a spark is seen and as within a voice a voice is heard when one remains and the other goes and comes so i in that light other lamps beheld whirling with greater speed or less i think according to each lamp's eternal vision out of cold clouds there ne'er descended winds or visible or not so swiftly moving that they would not appear restrained and slow to one who had perceived those lights divine drawn near to us when they had ceased the circling among the exalted seraphs first begun and in the foremost to appear hosanna resounded so that i have never since lacked the desire of hearing it again one then drew nearer to us and alone began we all are ready at thy pleasure that thou mayst have thy joy of all of us in one ring with one circling and one thirst we with the heavenly principalities revolved to whom once from the world thou saidst ye who the third heaven by your knowledge moved and were so full of love that thee to please a little quiet will not seem less sweet after mine eyes had toward my lady turned with reverent questioning and she herself had with herself contented and assured them back toward the light they turned which of itself had made such promise and who are ye say was what i voiced with great affection toned and how much greater did i see it grow in size and quality with that new joy which when i spoke was added to its joys grown thus it said to me the world below had me not long but had it done so longer much evil that will be would not have been the gladness which around me radiates and like a creature by its own silk swathed conceals me here now keeps me hidden from thee much didst thou love me and good cause hadst thou therefore since had i been on earth much more would i have shown thee than the leaves of love that left-hand bank which by the rhone is washed just after it has mingled with the sword looked in due time to have me as its lord as did the ausonian horn which is with Bari, Gaeta, and Cortona towned, and whence the Tronto and Verde pour into the sea. Upon my brow already blazed the crown of that land which the Danube irrigates when it abandons its Germanic banks, and fair Trinacria, which goes dark with smoke between Pacinus and Polaris capes, over the gulf which Eurus vexes most, 
not through Typhoeus, but through nascent sulphur, would still be waiting for its kings, through me from Charles and Rudolph sprung, had not ill rule, which always angers subject peoples, stirred Palermo to the point of shouting, Die! And did my brother but foresee this now, the greedy poverty would he avoid of Catalonia, that it harm him not, for verily provision must be made by him or by another, that no load be further laid upon his burdened bank. His nature, which descended mean from one which liberal was, would such retain as need as would not care to fill their coffers up. Since I, my lord, believe the joy profound thy speech infuses in me, is by thee perceived, where every good thing both begins and ends as I perceive it, all the more grateful it is, and I am also glad that this thou seest by looking up at God. As thou hast made me happy, make it clear, for thou hast moved me by thy words to doubt, how out of sweet seed bitter seed can spring. This I to him, and he, if I can show a truth to thee, to that which thou dost ask, thou hold thy face, as thou dost now thy back. The good which turns and sateth all the realm through which thou mountest, makes his providence a power within these mighty bodies here, and not alone are natures in that mind foreseen, which of its own self perfect is, but they themselves, and with them their well-being. Hence all this bow shoots forth, falls predisposed, unto an end foreseen, as would an arrow aimed at its destined mark. Were this not so, the heaven through which thou now art journeying in such a way would its effects produce, that ruins they would be, not works of art. Nor can this be, unless the intellects which move these stars are faulty, and the first, who fail to make them perfect, faulty too. Wouldst have this truth, become more white for thee. And I, no, truly, for I see that nature, in what is needful, cannot get fatigued. Then he, now say, would it be worse on earth for man, if he were not a citizen? Yes, I replied, nor do I here ask why. And can he be, unless men there below, in different ways, for different functions live? No, if thereon your teacher writeth well. So far he came, deducing thus, then closed. Because of this the roots of your effects must different be. Hence one is Solon born, Xerxes another, and Melchizedek another, and another he who lost his son while flying through the air. Revolving nature, which is a seal to mortal wax, performs our function well, but no distinction makes between one and any other dwelling place. It hence results that Esau in his seed differs from Jacob, while Quirinus comes from such a common father that ascribed to Mars he is. A generated nature, unless divine foresight prevailed, would always follow along its generator's path. Now that which was behind thee is before, but that thou know that thou dost give me pleasure, I'd have a corollary mantle thee. Nature, whene'er she finds a destiny discordant with her, like all other seed in soil unsuited to it, always fails. And if the world down there but set its mind upon the basal plan which nature lays and followed it, t'would have its people good, but to religion ye now rest aside, one that is born to gird him with a sword, and make a king of one that's fit to preach. The course ye take is therefore off the road. End of chapter 65